Hi, welcome back to Practice With Me. We are still working from the Standard of Excellence, book one, and today we're gonna do page six. Okay, so our last time we learned the note D, C, and B flat. So this is all just still extra practice. So far, we're not learning any new notes or note values right now. So, just as a refresher, the note D is the thumb down, and then we have the two fingers down, and then all three fingers, pinky is up. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Great, that was just more of a refresher, so it shouldn't have felt like anything new. And just for a reminder, we're on page six, exercise one. If you happen to miss it, it's fine. We're gonna do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, how was that? Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, we should start feeling pretty good about the note D. If you're not, it's fine. We're gonna just keep on practicing and we're gonna get great at it. The more we practice, the better we get. I know I say it a lot, but it's absolutely true. All right, exercise two. It's going to be the note C. And remember, this one has thumb off, index finger down, and pinky. And remember, your flute should be kind of holding itself up here on your hand and on your thumb, which should be here, like that. All right, ready for exercise number two? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Great, how was that? This was also a refresher exercise as it had been previously before. Now you're probably wondering why we're playing almost the same thing. But remember this book is for band and so we started with for flutes only, then it went for woodwinds only, and today if we have the whole band would be for the full band. But the extra practice to us doesn't hurt even though it's almost pretty well the same thing. That's okay. Okay, let's do it again. Exercise number two. Ready? One, two, three, four. Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, not so bad. 
Okay, on to exercise number three. We're gonna go D, C, D, C. So once again, practicing for back and forth with still a full measure to get used to your fingers switching back and forth. All right, starting on D. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, not too bad, huh? Now the book says write in counting and clap the rhythm before we play. Though we did just play this one, we can still do it just to be for sure. So let's do it. Let me set my flute down here for a minute. Okay, so we're gonna just clap and count. So clap when we have, so a whole note would actually just be one, two, three, four. And then our rests would just be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So let's actually do uh, counting and clapping for exercise number three, the one we just did. Ready? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 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 Great. It's not so hard since it's just, you know, everything right now is all four beats. So you have the whole note is all four beats and the whole rest is all four beats. Perfect. All right, let's play it again. I just need to grab my flute. All right, here we go. Remember, starting on D. Ready? One, two, three, four. Let's do it one more time because I still like to do everything in sets of three. Ready? One, two, three. Great, excellent. Okay, now on to exercise number four. We're gonna go over B flat again, which is the thumb, index finger, index finger, and pinky. And we're still only working with whole notes. All right, ready to play? One, two, three, four. Great. Are you getting pretty comfortable with B flat? We should be getting kind of comfortable with it now. If not, still no worries. It takes a while sometimes for our fingers to get used to the position and our embouchure and our breathing. There's kind of a lot to it. So if you're still struggling, not a big deal. Just keep pushing forward, keep practicing, have that positive attitude, you'll get it. All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's do it one more time for good luck. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. 
Excellent. How are you feeling? Great. Okay, so now the book says, when you see a page number followed by an arrow, accelerate to the page indicated for additional studies. So this is telling us to go to page 39. You know what? We're here to practice and get good. So let's flip to page 39, shall we? 39, and you'll see there's 4A and 4B. That's what we're going to cover because we're still technically in exercise four. Now, we'll see a couple new things here. So on the top here, it's talking about ties and slurs. So reading it out loud, a tie. A tie is a curved line that connects two notes of the same pitch. Tied notes are played as one unbroken note. So that would be in our exercise 4A. You still see the line and we see it goes to the same exact note. Now a slur is still that same kind of line, but it connects two or more notes of different notes. So um, we haven't really talked about tonguing or anything. So if you've watched the previous uh, actual episodes from Musician's Edition, I talked a little bit about tonguing in the happy birthday version or when we're doing uh, music theory. I've been having us ta things as well as counting. And so the ta's represents tonguing. So it could be ta 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 or ta ta, whatever the rhythm is. The ta's are the tongings. So a lot of times you'll know it'll be like this. That's me tonguing into the flute. When we're not tonguing, you just tongue the first note that's written, and the rest you just change the fingerings. You don't do anything with the tongue. So it'll be. Can you hear the difference? So that's what it really means. So in 4A, for example, you have a whole note with a tie to another whole note. So. That means instead of counting four beats, then going four beats, we're gonna act like it's eight beats. We're gonna try not to take a breath and we're gonna just play the note D for eight counts. Then we're gonna have a four count break and then we're gonna have a four or an eight count of the note C, four beats of rest and eight beats of the B flat. So try not to take a breath, don't, ta when it's the next whole note just play it out all right you think you got this i think you do all right 4a everyone ready one two three four that feel? Were you able to hit all those whole notes one after another without taking a breath? Did you not tongue and just let it play out? If you're struggling to play that long, remember, breathe from the diaphragm and just control it as if you're talking. You know, don't push out really hard. Just let it kind of flow. I know it's easier said than done, but Try to just keep that in mind. We don't want to push all your air out at once. You're probably, if you're doing that, you're probably not getting a very good sound either. So just a helpful tent tip. Okay, ready to do it again? Do it again? Ready? One, two, three, four. Was it a little better? Did you try to breathe from the diaphragm and relax the air a little bit? Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, a 
little easier? Okay, moving on to exercise 4B. Now, this is where it's a slur because we're changing notes. So we're going from B flat to C, and then we're having our four, re four beat rests, going on to C to D, four beat rests, C to B flat. So it's basically the same thing we just did, except for we're changing notes. Try not to take a breath. Try not to ta the next whole note. Only change your fingers. Okay, let's give it a try. Ready? One, two, three, four. How was that? A little harder? Did you take a breath in between the two? If you did, it's okay, this is a little more challenging. But it's super important to work on because in music, a lot of times we have those slurs and we have those long notes and holds. There's a reason why they tease that flute players never breathe. For a good hunk of time, we're just going and going and going and going. So. Okay, got to learn to breathe from the diaphragm, have control over our air. All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. A little easier? I hope so. If not, it's okay. We're gonna do it again. And if you're still struggling afterwards, that's fine. Go back, review, practice. You're going to get it. All right, last time. Ready? One, two, three, four. I hope that was a little better for you. I also hope that you're changing all your fingers at the same time instead of trying to, I mean, if you're still trying to figure it out, it's fine, you might be that way. Just keep practicing. Okay, so that concludes exercise four. So let's go back to page six. Here we are, page six. And we're moving on to exercise five. We no longer have the slurs or ties. So it's back to our four beat on, four beat off, four beat on, four beat off. And it's going to be a combination of the notes we just learned. So D, C, B flat. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four. That's great. If you happen to hear a little rumble, sorry, I'm kind of hungry. It's dinner time. It's fine though, <laughs> just, just ignore it. Okay, let's do this again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, how are you doing? Are you playing with confidence? That actually makes a huge difference if you feel confident. So if you're not feeling confident, just keep practicing, keep working on it. All right, let's do this for its last time. Ready? One, two, three, four.
Excellent. Okay, moving on to exercise number six. It's going to be going over the same notes. So it's C, B flat, D, and C. Ready? One, two, three. Excellent. Let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Are you feeling better and a little bit more confident and a little bit stronger? I hope so. Okay, on to our last exercise for tonight, exercise number seven. So once again, we're gonna go over just the three notes, B flat, C, and D, and then back to B flat. All right, ready? One, two, three, Wonderful. Now, maybe you're asking, when should you be changing your note during the rest? Whether you should do it towards the beginning or the end. To be honest, it's just a personal preference. So I am just used to changing my notes right before I play them, to be honest. So I have a tendency, for example, I'll play B and then my fingers just remain there until I'm like on count number four of the rest and then I move it on to the next note. But if you feel more comfortable moving it right at beat one on the rest or two, it doesn't matter, just as long as you get it in and wherever you feel comfortable. You might find yourself changing it even later as we progress. You might start changing it from the beginning and then later on as you get more comfortable with everything, you might be changing it towards, you know, closer to when the note is actually played. So just whatever you feel comfortable with is fine. Let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's do it for the last time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job today, and especially because we had two little side exercises and learned about tonguing, slurring, and ties. Terrific. Okay, so now at the bottom it says, lines with the metal are achievement lines. The chart is on page 47, can be used to record your process. Progress, I'm sorry. So we see here, let me set my flute down and show you in the book what it's talking about. This little thing here is what it's talking about. It's considered a metal. So when you go to page 47, which I think is towards the end of the book. Oh, also, if you need a flute fingering chart, that is at the back of the book. So use it in reference whenever it's needed. Okay, so what did it say? 40, 
seven. I just guessed it. It's pretty close to the back of the book. And we see here it has all these little check boxes. So we did exercise number seven. So things we have worked on for the past three days was notes, rhythm, and tone, which is absolutely true. Our notes, we worked on whole notes. Our rhythm, well, oh, I'm sorry. Notes was B flat, C and D. And our first day we learned A and G as well. Rhythm, that's our whole notes and whole rests. Tone, that's just making sure we have a good, solid sound coming out. So those are things that um, we should feel fairly comfortable with. If you're still struggling, go back, practice until you feel strong, confident, all right? Thanks for tuning in and practicing with me and I'll see you tomorrow.